This is my second movie with him, actually. We were uh, we did a movie called Dirty Grandpa years ago. Oh, is that yeah. with De Niro? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how was it working with De Niro? Oh, uh, we should get back to this. It was great. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's get back to this. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Pete Fairley. I'm Zach Efron. And this is Notes on a Scene for the Greatest Beer Run Ever. Chicky? What are you doing here? I brought you beer. Who are you with? I'm with you. Seriously, Chicky, what the hell are you doing here? The greatest beer run ever, of course, is about uh, Chicky Donahue. It's a true story. In 1967, 68, he went to Vietnam to bring beer to his friends who were fighting the war in Vietnam. It was a ludicrous, crazy mission, but he did it. He got over there and basically hitchhiked around the country, dropping off beer. But now he has gone up to LZ Jane. This is uh, north- Close to the front line. Yeah. And this is his second friend that he meets. This is really his when he realizes he's in over his head. Ta-da! <laughs> Chicky? What are you doing here? I brought you beer. Who are you with? I'm with you. We shot all over Thailand. We wanted to shoot in Vietnam, but they don't allow it. They have to approve what you photograph after you photograph it. So we could have shot the whole movie. They say, nah, we don't like that. So we end up going to Thailand, but it was the same terrain, exact same terrain as, uh, as Vietnam. Seriously, Chicky, what the hell are you doing here? Really? <laughs> Me and all the fellas were sitting around talking about what we could do to bring your spirits up, and then bang, it hit us. Bring you a beer. Sorry about you. Yeah. Dumb shit! What? You almost got me killed out there! And this is what happened. This is Rick Dugan did push him over. He knocked him in, and, and Chicky tells us, he said he was stunned. Like, what are you talking about? I brought you a beer. He didn't realize. And also, just, just prior to this, <laughs> Chicky has actually called in and had Ricky Dugan come from the front line all the way through, like, the gnarliest section of yeah. crossfire and 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 gunfire and everything. So he's just literally cheated death and ran like, a, you know, half a mile to get up to, to see this guy from the CIA. And it ends up being just chicky. So he is hot. I and, wasn't. <laughs> and this is when the, this is when the movie turns, by yeah. the way. Right up to here, it's been fun and games. Mm. And then this happens. Dumb shit. What? You almost got me killed out there. What am I going to do? You mean to tell me this asshole's a civilian? Okay, now that man is Carlos Arroyo, the NBA mm. basketball player, by the way, who's also a rapper. There was something about him that was very fun and easy to look at, and I had a feeling he could act, so I called him up. I said, would you consider acting? He said, I've never acted. I said, L let me audition you and see how it goes. And sure enough, we auditioned him, and he was sensational. He nails it. And I met him, like, just the day prior to this, and I was like, where do I know you from? And he's like, oh, I played pro basketball for 12 years. And yeah. Oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah. It was, we had never yeah. had this conversation. I yeah. had no idea he was in the movie. And by the way, he's he's not, awesome. he's not that big a guy. He's like my size and you know, it's a stud. Played 12 years in the NBA, but anyway. Is he nuts? I don't know, Chicky, are you nuts? What? No. You delivering beer in a battle zone? Yeah, so? It said fine, I just came from seeing Collins. He didn't mind. You found Collins? Yeah. It was easy. He was right next to my ship in Saigon. Look, look, look how good look at this mustache. Yeah, it's just perfect. It's 100% real, it's okay. authentic mustache. I've shaved it, it's for auction right now. If anybody wants to donate. <laughs> that was a good mustache. <laughs> was... Very solid, all his too, by the way. I realized it was pretty good when Pete gave me a compliment every other day or so. He's like, it just gets better and better. And it's better. A, it was a <laughs> solid, I mean, he had a huge caterpillar going up there. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Uh, After this, I'm gonna go visit Reynolds and Pappas. By the way, a lady tried to sell me a snake on the way over here. You think this is funny? Huh? What? It's not funny at all! I don't think it's funny! Okay, I'm not doing this for laughs, Ricky. I'm doing it for you, for all you guys. This is a goddamn war, Donahue. You shouldn't be here. Chicky, get back to your boat right now. Forget about the other guys. You can buy them a beer when they get home. This is serious shit out here. Yeah, I know. That's the moment Jake Picking turns into a movie star, by the way. Yeah. He's incredible. Everybody who sees this comes out like, who the hell is that guy? Yeah, he crushed it, and I remember I was, as just as an actor experiencing it, sitting from the other, on this side, I knew I was seeing some magic. You keep on the stupid beer run, there's a 99% chance you're going tits up. Sarge, can we get a, a egg beater in tonight and, you know, scoot him out of here? It's too dangerous. 
Nothing's flying till morning. Right, so what am I supposed to do with him? Well, if I know, he's yours now. Take him with you. Well, I I'm on ambush post, sir. Your problem, Dugan. You want a taste of Vietnam? You're about to get it. Grab your shit. <sighs> Grab your shit! I am! I love that because that you could hear the child in you. <laughs> I am! Stop yelling at me. We're in a war. Come on, get it together. And that scene, by the way, is right out of the book, right? Yes, yeah. That's, this scene's right out of the book. This is one of the ones that, that Chicky talked about mm. pretty frequently in all the sort of uh, interviews. And he's very vocal about this moment. And uh, it was one of the ones that I really wanted to nail and get right for him. And it it's it really depicts his sincerity with which he's and his innocence in this moment. He really is, thinks he's doing a great thing. He has no real concept of the danger he's just put his best friend through. Yeah, and, um, and <laughs> we got to hang with Chicky quite a bit before the movie. I went down to Florida where he still lives. He's in his 80s. And he literally acted that out for me. And I, when, when you were doing your thing, I was thinking, this is exactly what Chicky was doing. Like, who are you with? I'm with you. He goes, why, you know? I brought you, bring your beer. <laughs> Hey. Thanks. What's this for? To shoot the bad guys, Dodo. It looks like you're gonna be taken for prisoner. Shoot yourself or they'll torture you for info. For info? Hold on, I don't have any info. They don't know that, asshole. Okay. Jeez. Getting edgy. I just think Carl Carlos Arroyo was so good. So that. good. He was so great. Yeah, and, he he kept, was, and I didn't give him any notes because he just came in and nailed it. And he kept saying, am I doing it okay? I said, yeah, you're, you're killing it. He, you he did. He kept nailing it. And then he would kind of, I realized at one point he was looking at me like, was that good? And I kept going like, dude, I, I haven't been telling you, but you're <laughs> yeah. freaking awesome, man. You're unbelievable. It's, it's Every amazing. take, he's yeah, real. this is the first day he's ever acted. Yeah. It's just incredible. Uh, no, 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 bad idea, Sarge. He's got a better chance of shooting one of us than one of them. What are you talking about? I know guns. I was in the military. Where'd you serve? Massachusetts. Yeah, give me that. Yeah, this is it. This is where Chiki gets woken up. You just realize you're in over your head and sometimes you have a moment where you just can't believe you've gotten yourself into this scenario. And that's sort of what's about to happen to Chiki. At this point, he still doesn't really know what's about to happen. You're and describing marriage, you know that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know what he's in for, exactly. Yeah. And so it's fun to play. I love Chicky's innocence in this moment, the fact that he really doesn't know where he's headed. He still doesn't know what they're doing, and he's been handed a gun and a helmet. He's kind of like, what, what's going on? What are we doing? And he so, starts to see, you know, what Vietnam was really about, because up to then, he's been, like most of America at that time, 1967, we were watching it with blinders on. We thought it was... The, we thought it was World War II, mm. and the people were who, who were protesting at that at that point were in the minority. Right. It wasn't until a couple of years later that the tide turned and most Americans were against war. At this point, everyone's for it, and, uh, and all of a sudden he's in it, and he starts seeing there's some shit happening here that's not quite right. And, and also another thing is, in this moment is he's very, very confused. He's never seen his friend this serious about anything. These are all best friends. His friend's clearly concerned. The soldiers themselves, yeah. you know, the soldiers were, they were the same guys that, that, as the guys who were in World War II. They were exactly the same. They were young kids. They were patriots. They thought they were doing their duty. But as we find out, as the war goes on, we had bad leadership and it, it wasn't on them. It wasn't their fault. It was, you know, the people running the war and that's what he starts to see. Are you ready? I guess. What are we doing? We're gonna run for our lives. Right there at that moment, there was a lot of what they call squibs. Explosions. It's machine gun fire that sort of mimics machine gun fire, oh. and they're planted everywhere. And the explosives expert on set yeah. had planted them along this pathway with tiny little flags. So we were running through a trench we had never run through before. It was about 200 yards, maybe mm -hmm. 150 yeah. yards. Yeah. And it was downhill, muddy, rocky, really hard terrain to run through. And uh, he said, just follow the green flags. And I'm like, so where are the squibs? And he's like, uh, all over. And I'm like, well, what happens if we step on them? He goes, don't do that. And I'm like, well, how do I know if I'm gonna step on one? And it's like, action. What the, f and we just ran yeah. out and literally just proceeded to go 
absolutely yeah. through one of the most terrifying runs of my and life. And by the way, it was <laughs> about 100 degrees and 100% humidity. Yeah. We had three people pass out on the set, just out cold. Yeah, this was a day in the elements. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was wild. Yeah. We felt like we were there. This is the first day it got real. This is a war movie. <laughs> Alright. We're halfway home. Halfway? That was a crazy day. I can't believe we got all that done, man. The first thing I said when I was doing this movie is I called Chicky and we got to know each other and I told Chicky that the person I want to please more than anybody is you. I want to tell your story truthfully. And if the world loves this movie, but you don't, it's a disaster for me. I have to please you. So I kept him really uh, close to us. I gave him all the drafts of the script as we were going along. He gave me notes. This would have been here. We did this. We had the elephants in the wrong place. But it's, I would say, 85 to 90% true. Amazingly, Chicky's friends who made it out are all still alive. They've all seen the movie. They are very happy with it. It's pretty cool to look at the people that you experienced the filming with and sit with the real guys and see how happy they are with it. So, I mean, that's, there's no bigger compliment than that.